Our next question is from Logan Thomas. What is more important, spiking insulin before the gym or after the workout? I've heard both have value, one for energy and one for recovery. I don't know enough about it and want to know if it's healthy. Okay, so here's what's more important. Focus on your workout programming. Mm. Focus on general nutrition and yeah. sleep. And this right here is a great example of where, especially the supplement industry, will put Point out- zero like zero one percent effective. Yeah, these small things, or we're talking about the super advanced, what like earlier in the episode, we were talking about Ben Greenfield, where that extra 1% might make a difference. This is one of those things, like spiking your natural insulin uh, before or after. What kind of a difference is it going to make? It's not going to make- it's going to make a difference that you won't notice ever. So it really doesn't matter. Here's what I like this. This is what's more important. Which one do you feel better doing? So I'll use myself as an example. Spiking insulin before would require that I eat something that caused an insulin response, either fast digesting proteins or usually carbohydrates, right? I never eat before my workout. Why? Is it because I don't want my insulin to spike? No, because I feel better fasted when I work out. Yeah. Now there's other people I have most, actually most of my clients are not like this. Most of the clients that I ever trained did not feel better fasted. Most of them needed to eat something an hour or two before mm -hmm. because they felt better energy. In that case, eat something before. Now, what about eating afterwards? Okay, well, there may be some cases where because you have gut issues, the workout's inflammatory, probably better off waiting a couple hours after your workout. In other cases, you may this may be one of the ways you get your body to relax after it's already amped up from a workout because eating does put yourself it's in a- It's a parasympathetic uh, response. Yes, yes so. but boy, are we we start to really focus on well, these you, small things and it's such a waste of time. You hit it on the head. It's exactly, yeah. this is it. Perfect, perfect example what we were just talking about with taking science, right? There's science out there to support the benefits of spiking the insulin before you go on it. You know who uses that science all the time? People that sell pre-workouts. Yep. You know who uses the science about post-workout? People that sell shakes, protein bars, and post-workout yep, stuff. Yep. They use that science to support the argument of why they're selling this product to you. At the end of the day, I have never had a client where the, using one of those products was a game changer in their results. Yeah, you, I'll give you guys, here's a, uh, here's a great example, actually. We, uh, years ago, we talked to a top trainer for professional athletes. And there were a couple things that they said that were so illuminating. Okay, so let's use basketball players, for example. Basketball players, professional basketball players, are usually huge, right? They're like six foot seven or taller, big dudes. Uh, oftentimes, they have fucked up looking feet because either the shoes don't, you know, it's hard to find size 15 shoes, and especially when you're 17 years old or whatever. So they cram their feet into other shoes and they've got messed up toes and they've got weird biomechanics. And I remember talking to this trainer, I was like, oh, do you work a lot on like foot connection and mobility and correcting, you know, how, you know imbalances in their feet? And he goes, no, they became professional athletes because they learned how to compensate so well. If I back them out of their compensations, they're not going to perform well anymore. And we're going to go backwards and it's, it's going to, I'm going to shoot myself, you know, no pun intended in the foot. Here's another example, talking to him about nutrition. I, you know, I'm like, have you ever thought about telling your athletes who have this ritual of eating, you know, this particular bad meal, like cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets before every game? Have you ever thought about giving them better nutrition? And he goes, No. I might give them better nutrition, which will help them physically, but psychologically, they're so attached to their ritual of eating their cheeseburger and nuggets that that'll mess them up even more. So this is the stuff that you need to always consider. So the answer to this particular question is, do you feel better eating before or after? That's the right answer. Forget what the science says about insulin or whatever. It doesn't matter nearly as much as which one makes you feel better. Well, the, and the truth is what you just highlighted is what supplement companies know this. And so they once they get you on that ritual, then that's enough excuse just to keep it going. Because totally. It's like, oh, I always do my pre-workout shake <laughs> and I feel the best when I do that. And when I go get that thing right afterwards, I always feel the best. So Sal, I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm like, yeah, they got you, bro. <laughs> they already yeah. got you. Yeah, and it's funny because I noticed the same thing. If I don't eat, like I'm more focused and I'm more into yes. the, the workout. And so for some people, they they haven't really trained their their mind to kind of get into that zone and space. And so they need that like energy. And so they focus on getting through the workout instead of really like hyper focusing on the intent of the exercise. So there's like yeah. there's a lot more to it, but it's definitely individual yeah, variants the, the, all just, across the board. Justin, the science is clear. Eating a couple hours before will improve your performance. Guess what? I feel better fasted. So what am I going to follow? I'm yeah. going to eat. I'm going to go fasted into the workout. That's right. Yeah. That's the right answer. And I think that's what people need well, to understand. You listen to your own body. Listen to your body. Absolutely.